Sweet. All right. So, we're going to play some trumpet today, and we're going to learn how it works and why it works, and we're going to learn a, little, a cute little tune. Sound good? Yeah. Sweet. So, do you know how, first, how sound is produced on trumpet or brass instruments in general? Yeah. So, we're going to do a little free buzzing and just just see what happens, right? Just... Mm -hmm. There you go, there you go. Yeah. Um, see if you can get it a little bit of a higher pitch. Hey, hey, There's something like that. Yeah. Something like that, cool. When you have the mouthpiece, it helps. Um, biggest thing, the same with any air instrument, is like make sure that we're in chair, seat up straight, the body is centered, right? Good airflow in, and then a buzz on the out, right? Uh, four in, four out, two. Cool. You can get the gist. Sweet. So, here is your instrument for today. In this bag, there is a mouthpiece. Can you get that out for me? Start with just some mouthpiece work. Cool. So it goes center on the lift with no pressure. And then the same type way as you free buzz, just buzz into it. I'll model it for you. Uh. So cool. Make sure that the corners of your mouth stay nice and firm, but the center of it stays as relaxed as possible so you can get like as full of sound out of this as you can. Uh. <laughs> All right, yeah, I know we got somewhere you even like had a pitch and then it kind of dipped off at the end. Yeah. Um, how much are you thinking about air while doing this? Mm, like none. Cool. So the whole like, at least like pedagogically, what I've heard from brass people and discovered in my own like small amount of time playing brass instruments. This, you kind of just like, it, it happens if the air is doing its job. So really think about, <laughs> see it took me a second because I don't play a whole lot of this. <laughs> There we go. So there was a lot of air in it. Make sure it's centered over the lips and that your air is moving with your diaphragm, not from your chest. All right, so how did that one compare to the previous one? Because that's the best one so far. Uh, more stomach. More stomach, more the air. Yeah. How about the sound? I think it was more consistent. It was. We like you found a pitch and you stayed on it, and yeah. like the tone of it kind of opened and closed a little bit, so I could tell you were thinking about that. Um, so one more, and then we'll try to see if we can find it on a pitch. Cool. Two. Ready. Yeah. All right. Sweet. So let's see if we can tune it to. Yeah. Okay. Good job. You sang it. So sing it. Lightheaded? No. Oh. I was very flat. All right. So you're very flat. Move more air, and make sure your corners corners are firm. I said corners. Corners are firm, so that there's like enough. I don't want to say use the word tension, but for lack of a better word, tension happening in the same way that there's tension on a string, right, on your lips, so that they're producing this pitch. Oh, God. Good 
You had it for just a second. Yeah. You had it for a second. Yeah. It's easier to stay on pitch with the instrument, but it's best to like develop the feel for it just on this. And we'll go back and forth. Uh, with these. Okay. So pull the horn out of there. Put this in here for now, just so that it's like somewhere you have to worry about holding it. How much do you know about the way that this thing produces sound? Sweet, amazing. We can talk about it. So when you buzz in the mouthpiece, this this is the instrument. This essentially is just an amplifier, right? So you buzz in, it goes in here, right? It just makes it louder. That pitch, that B flat, um, is uh, resonating based on the length of the instrument. And that's what the valves do. They make the instrument longer. Because, you know, like how sound frequencies resonate in a tube. So like if you have um, like a bottle and you blow over it and it makes certain pitches and then you like drink more of the Coke and then it's like a lower pitch because there's more space, okay. so it's a longer resonating wave. Do you have physics in high school? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we talked about harmonics and resonating and all that. So, this second valve, the two extra tubing is this big. This first valve, the extra tubing is that big. And the third valve, the extra tubing is that big. So, which of these do you think changes the pitch the least? Only the smallest one. So this makes it longer by, can you guess how much? Half step. Half step. And then this is whole step. And this is whole and a half. There you go. So if you're just playing a. Right? That didn't really change much of anything with my lips. It opened up a little bit to like affect the tone, but essentially I was doing the same thing and then different resonant frequencies happened to be um, amplified by the instrument based on the length of the tube. Cool? Yeah. So let's try that same B flat that we were uh, buzzing on the mouthpiece. Let's see if we can get that and it's, that is open. Okay. There we go. So it kind of was out, and then you tuned it up. So what did you do with your mouth to tune it up? You could have just buzzed a bit faster. Buzzed a bit faster. So you moved more air, faster air. Probably tightened a little bit. Um, when you're blowing, your lips are puffing out a lot. Make sure you keep everything outside of the center very firm and then just the center very loose. That's like the hardest thing with brass instruments. It's keeping the firmness while staying loose in the center. So one more time. Let's... All right. So, um, and then inside of this same fingering, because there's only three buttons, so if you use only the comp regular combination, then you'd like only be able to play six notes. Um, so there's different partials. Um, we're getting the B flat. Let's see if we can get the F above. So yeah. you kind of like whispered it for a second. Yeah. Um, again, the answer 99% of the time is always more air. Um, and really, really make sure you hear that pitch in your head before you play it. And I mean, your body will kind of naturally do the rest. But more air, just a slight bit more firmness. And um, let's try that. And then if it's... 
you're still having an issue, then you can add some more steps. So. <laughs> You're singing the B flat. You weren't well, singing it. You no, were singing it's coming out B flat though. Because that's it's a lower partial. Your lips aren't used to making the higher one yet. Um, it has a lot to do with oral posture, as well, and the very particulars of that. I'll admit I don't know, because we didn't really talk about internal mouth voicing in brass tech, but I know that it's a big thing about it. Um, can you do? E -o, e -o, e -o. Well, not without moving your jaw, just not moving your tongue up and down. It doesn't have to be on pitch, just like make donkey sounds. E -o, e -o, e -o. E -o, e -o, e -o. So don't move your jaw, just right. your tongue. E -o, e -o, e -o. Put the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth. E it you, you oh, sound yeah. like an idiot, but it's yeah. fine. Because I sound like an idiot too. It's fine. <laughs> cool. So your jaw's still moving a little bit, but that's okay. Um. So it's the same kind of concept on this, right? <laughs> supposed to work. Cool. So I'm gonna try to see if that F can happen. Hey, you like nailed it at first. Yeah. Just gotta hold it and relax. But that's okay, because we'll figure some stuff out. So. There'll be a roadblock sooner or later. Huh? There'll be a roadblock. Oh, there will be a roadblock. Um, okay, so. What these valves do, right, is they make pitches lower. So, based on that F partial, which is here, um, which trumpet is a transposing instrument, so um, B flat, so. F concert would actually be called a uh, G for trumpet. So like they would read written a G, but then what comes out is that which is a concert F. Um, but we're not reading anything right now, so it's not quite so pertinent, but so that the names can make, make sense of it. So we're gonna get to here. And the tune we're going to play goes a little something like... The flop is the flop. You don't have to do that B-flat at the top. I can't hit that B-flat at the top. But it makes it cute. Um, so, if we're at this partial... Combination gets us down to that pitch. Third one. Just the third. Yeah, that could work. So we're up. <laughs> yeah, that'll get us there. Um, that one generally is somewhat poorly in tune, which is why this D slide exists because. You play a D with just that, make the tuning a little weird, so you pop it out, so that's right. But your trumpet doesn't have a functioning D slide, and my yeah. trumpet barely has a functioning D slide. So we're going to do one and two, which gives the same thing, right? Because it's a, 
a whole step and a half step, whole step and a half. So first note, one and two, and then we need to go a whole step lower than that. So that would be lower. Wait. So you just went up by a half. Wait. What do you want? We need to go a whole step lower. Oh, uh, okay. Wood fingering for the C. I just want to like think through it so we're actually like learning how. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. One and three. And then the B flat is open. Cool. So. <laughs> play it and then well, are you picturing F in your head sort of okay so this is actually a thing that I've like gotten into conversations with brass players about and like can't quite figure out um, or like there's different interpretations so like you're thinking of the F partial because this is an extension of the F partial except when you make the tube longer Theoretically, it could just naturally be here, and this could be the open voice in an instrument. So, really, there should be a slightly different set for every single note, because, like, I've, I've lost my momentum on that sentence. But, like, you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because every time you change the length of the tubing of the instrument, you're in a sense, completely changing the structure of the instrument that you're playing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you've seen like the old, like, royal bugles that they have in like Monty Python and stuff, where it's just mm -hmm. a, a big long tube with a flag on it. Mm -hmm. That's a trumpet. It just doesn't have any vowels, so it can only play the harmonic series of one fundamental. Mm -hmm. So this just means you don't have to have like, you know, an array of them and just mm -hmm. go back and forth like a, like a little circus seal. Um, so, when I play a D, I think D. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, if it helps you to think F, you think F. But I tend to try to think D. So, you try both ways. So, can we play the D? One and two. just hitting the D from the start, right? Ready? And. Ready? Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Hang on. Air? Lightheaded? Yeah. <laughs> happens. Whoa. Make sure. Big deep breath in. Now, if you're not used to playing wind instruments a lot, it can happen, and then just take a deep breath, jump back into it when you're ready, and your your brain will figure it out. Wow. Uh. Hey! Yeah. Try it again. <laughs> cool. So think back to what you did, how it felt. Um, sit high, a little higher up in the chair. I'll scoot back so we're not hitting trumpets together. <sighs> wow. Okay. Try so try something. Get it to where you can. 
So like you might just right. Well, um, the what is it? The Call of Gondor, whatever. You watch Lord of the Rings. Um, and then don't change anything. Don't move it, and just rearticulate the B. If like you need, if as of right now you need to sweep up to it to hit it, right? And don't don't take it off. Leave it. And don't take it off. Just stop. Yeah. Rearticulate. Stop. Rearticulate. Let's do the same thing now with concert C, which the fingering for that is one and three. Yep. One, two, things and it's a million things to think about and you might not even get to a full run by the end of this and that's okay because you learned something. So you get me So it sounds like you're losing air support and you're losing like resonance in your lips. So let me move that up. Um, so you take a big full breath before, All right? So let's take like a two count breath instead of a one count breath. So rest two. <sighs> to start on the B flat.
seems to, that seems to be getting us the, the closest so far. <laughs> like buzz with the lips so let's put the horns down for a sec I can just put this next to mine on a hard case and then We play with it. <laughs> uh, build it back up, right? Yeah. First, uh, you're also going to be getting a little tired. Just. There you go. It helps the muscles relax and everything. Make sure you're, like, your jaw is not getting tight. Cool. Can you do it and then, like, feel like a pulling in motion with the muscles here to change the pitch of it. Yeah. Those are the kind of the muscles that are activated when you're changing partials on this. And if you if we're playing tuba right now, then like those are like is about a B flat on the tuba. But you do that in this. It makes a really horrible sound when you put an R and it's really not fun. <laughs> but, so, we're looser here. Cool, so the outside of your lips are like, make sure it stays firm. I feel like everything's like moving to the center and really directing the air. Okay, we got more of a pitch. <laughs> Something I heard the other day that helped me a lot. It was in a French horn lesson, but I imagine it applies to trumpet. Um, so you watch SpongeBob. Mm -hmm. You know Squidward walks. The little sound it makes when Squidward walks. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that. No. <laughs> so it's kind of like your tongue and everything goes like forward. And you Cool. Now, when you're in, like the right in the middle of it, the way that your mouth is like yeah. there, and this is like pulled in, that's kind of the oral posture for a like high breast. All right, we had something for a second. You have to change the range of it. It happens. You get used to it. Okay. Everything that we've done so far is just like left my brain. It happens. 
So we're at the 30 minute mark. We're supposed to stop, but let's call it 33 minutes because we won't kill them. And see if we can go back on the horn and at least get Mi Re Do to happen. Okay, for that? Yeah. And if it doesn't in the next two minutes, oh well, you know more about trumpet than you did before we met. Start. Let's do, let's do Do Re Mi and then see if we can walk it down to. Me right there. Cool. So we're starting on down. <laughs> cool. So you see how like you had to have air support throughout the whole thing, right? So think about that as it goes so that you can have the music control. We're gonna do that again a little bit quicker. So let's Returning back to where you just came from. Cool. See, you lost air support is kind of yeah. what I got in your way. But can we start on me now? So let's, one more time, just so we can cap this off. Start back on Do. Do, Re, Mi, Re, Do. So we can call that our like, little improv and feel good about ourselves. Two. Whoa. <laughs> Got the F out, all right. Two. Find the B flat. Like five minutes over time, <laughs> so I'm gonna call it on the video. Yeah, uh, we can keep working for a while if you want, though. But I have to turn in 30 minutes and I can't yeah. edit it. Okay, yeah, so that's what we got done, and we had a good time. Um, lesson was not it was successful, but we did not get to everything on the list, but that's okay.